Good morning. God is good all the time. I want to welcome you to the service of worship the last Sunday, this memorial weekend. We celebrate as a nation who remember those who gave their life for freedom and also remember our loved ones. So to all who have come, welcome in the house of the Lord. May you be blessed today. I want to call your attention announcement as you know that because the tornadoes in Iowa a uh, special offering uh, to give to the advance and to Moville United Methodist Church uh, we'll continue on prayer for those uh, who have lost their home in Greenfield for those who are grieving from the from the storm and everything um, devastation that have taken place um, also, annual conference is coming up, and so I encourage you to pray for annual conference in two weeks. Um, do we have any other announcement? I know the uh, camp, uh, we want to encourage our kids for summer camp. Uh, there's a form back there, application paperwork. The United Methodist Church here, we want to do everything for our kids to go to camp uh, this year, uh, experience the love of God. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Let us greet one another and pass the peace. Good morning. So let's we'll do the second scripture. Yeah, we don't. Thank you. Please stand as you are able for the call to worship. Please stand as you are able. We we'll sing holy, holy, following that the call to worship. Let us sing holy, holy, holy as we celebrate the Trinity Sunday today.
please follow along for the call to worship. Holy, holy, holy is the God of hosts. The whole earth is full of God's glory. All who are led by God's spirit are sons and daughters of God. Led by one spirit, we gather as one church, gratitude and praise. We have come to worship the living God, three in one. We are come to praise God Almighty. Please follow along for the opening prayer. Let us pray together. O oh Lord our God, uh, how majestic, majestic is, is your name, name in all the earth and heavens. We, we come, come to, to praise you as the, the creator, creator of, of all that is, to remember, remember and proclaim your acts for our salvation through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ and, and to, to call, call on the Holy Spirit, Spirit to renew our hearts and minds. Lead us into the fullness of your love that our lives might glorify you in all that we say and do. Amen. You may be seated. Please follow along for the scripture from Isaiah 6, 1 through 8. Thank you, Liz. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried. I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with the live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? And I said, Here am I. Send me. May God bless his reading, reading of his word that will yield the call. At this time, I want to invite the young disciples to come forward for children time. I wanted to talk to you about the Ten Commandments. Do you know the Ten Commandments? You heard about them? Huh? I heard about them, I forgot them all. Well, surely not all of them. Let's see if we can think of them. And if we can't, then we're going to ask them if they can. So get your thinking hats on. Okay. Let's see. What might be one of the Ten Commandments? Well, the first uh, few on the list, when you read the Bible, it says they're all about honoring God, loving God with all our heart, and um, not serving any other gods. Okay. What does that mean, serving any other gods? Do you know what that means? Obey God. Well, obey, that's right. But it also means... As much as we love the things around us, our clothes, our house, our friends, we, we're not supposed to love anybody or anything more than we love God. And I think that's a hard one for people to really follow through and do. We have to remember, remind ourselves, as much as I love this thing that I'm holding on to, I love God more. And that's hard to do. Okay, what's another one? 
Come on, help them out. Yes. Honor, father, uh, honor your father and mother. Okay. Thou shalt not kill. And not steal. And don't covet. You know what that means? That means when you see your friend with a brand new dress, a brand new bike, you're not supposed to say, I wish I had that. That's another one that's pretty hard to follow. Envy, maybe? Yes. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we did, we did pretty good. We didn't get the whole list, but we did pretty good. But I think because it's such a long list, we have trouble with it. And if you read it right out of the Old Testament, the way they put the words, sometimes it's hard to figure out just what they did say. Because sometimes it's hard to read the Old Testament. But uh, some years ago, one of our bishops, Reuben Job, wrote a book. It's called Three Simple Rules, A Wesleyan Way of Living. And he was a Methodist bishop a long time ago. I was privileged to meet him and, and be in a meeting or two with him. So I bought his book. And this makes it so much easier to remember three instead of ten, right? That, that should be easier to re figure out. And this is the first rule. Do no harm. That covers quite a few of those ten commandments, I think. And the other one is do good. That covers a lot of ground. And the last one that he lists in this book is to stay in love with God. And I think those three rules, so much easier to remember, cover everything and maybe even a little more than the Ten Commandments did. When God gave those Ten Commandments, he didn't really believe any of us would be able to follow up. But he gave it to us to know that unless we can follow every one of those commandments perfectly, we're not good enough for him. And that's why then later he sent Jesus to cover our sins because he knew we would never make it and he wanted us back with him. And so... We have Jesus to cover our sins, and when we give our hearts and our love to Jesus, God forgives us for anything we've done that's wrong. And he helps us each day to keep doing the things that we should do. Let's see if we remember those three things. Do no harm. Do good. Stay in love with God. And that's the most important one, to stay in love with God. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, you know our failings. You know that we have a hard time being good. Help us each day to try and remember the three rules. Do no harm. Do good and stay in love with God. And help us to love God more than anything else in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's a few candies there if you want to share. Thank you, Janice. At this time, then I will give thank you for the ministry of our church. Let us rise for the doxology.
Holy God, who is both one and three, we praise you as God above us, God beside us. And God within us. We worship and gratitude as our creator good things. Bless these gifts we gave and bless the transformational impact they may have. In your holy name, amen. Please be seated. There's a sweet song on sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know sweet spirit when I see this. When I see week after week you come and you do things in the church to, because you love God. It's a fellowship time. Um, to do work. Sweet spirit with her. Please come forward. Here today, but we just wanted to. Uh, celebrate you. I want to say a special prayer and blessing. And, and all, all you do for this church, the ministry, because you love God and all the fellowship time. Diane, get some words. Everybody join us afterwards. We've got cake and food and everything plenty for everybody. Yeah. Okay, let me say a special prayer for her. You just stretch your hand towards Cindy and as she celebrate her birthday too. And I, I don't know. Is that correct? Well, it's already been, but it's already a celebration. celebration with family. So let, let us pray for God's blessing. Thank you for all you do for this church. Let us pray. Almighty God, send your blessing upon Cindy. Send your anointing, your grace. Give her strength. Thank you for the for the way she's loved you and served this church in different ways. Pray for her family. That you will bless them and, and how much she's special to us. Watch over her and may your goodness and mercy follow her all the days of her life as she finds ways to love you in service to your honor and your glory. We give thanks and let all God's people say amen. amen. God bless you. God bless you. I would like to introduce my family. Okay, yeah, she want, yeah. I'm going to go up there and Okay. Okay, so family, she wanted to introduce you guys, so please stand, and she will point you off, and we'll want to know you by name. Hello, perhaps some of you are from Iowa, or some of you from other state. You can say that if that's okay. Okay. This is my sister, Janelle, and her husband, Del. They're from Omaha, Nebraska. Omaha. My niece, Amy, from Columbus, Nebraska. Welcome. That was a major surprise. Mm -hmm. Good surprises are good. Yeah. My daughter Sherry and her husband Brian from Ankeny, Iowa. Wonderful. My daughter Nikki, her friend Chris, and her daughter Lindsay. Moveo. Uh -huh. And then my son Kirk at the end, and his fiance and her son, well, Kirk and his fiance. Okay. <laughs> it's all good. And Logan from Oklahoma, Henry Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Welcome. Uh -huh. God is good. As we always say, God is good. All the time. Welcome, welcome. Enjoy the blessing and goodness of God as we celebrate. We'll continue in the spirit of prayer, and we want to also celebrate the concern uh, with 
those who are impacted on the, the tornadoes, if you have ways to support and give advice to our church, I will continue prayer for those who are recovering. You know, this, the town of Greenfield have, was hit high, and so a lot of uh, churches, United Methodist churches, trying to do what they can do to help. Um, pray for those families who lost lives and are recovering. Anniversary is coming up. I know, Linda, you, you and Terry have an anniversary. Congratulations to you. And I'm, I'm having an anniversary as well. My anniversary uh, is Tuesday. Yes, yeah, so I, I look back and I give thanks to God. You know, sometimes I forget my wife said, you don't forget this, you know? <laughs> so, another joy is my son had a graduation from East High. So um, thanks be to God. Thank you for all your support, your cards you sent to him. And what have you? Uh, do we have any joy or concern for, to share with the church family? And for the family who are traveling for this memorial weekend, that God will keep them safe. You know, sometimes this weekend can be hard for some folks. But at the same time, we can pray for God's peace. And God peace upon our nation as we remember those who are sacrificed their lives and those who serve in many capacity. So before we say our song, I want to listen to this poem. Morning light, we gather here as bells of peace ring loud and clad. Young and old, our heads we bow. Gratitude for the brave, the only things in our heart resides. Deep, deep respect we cannot hide. Beneath the flag, so high and proud, love and pearl we say aloud. Every hero past and present, shining stars supremely descent, silent fuels of valor wine. Tributes flow like the rising tide, hope eternal, softly springs, Eternal life, the choir reigns. Honors call forever reigns. Each soul flies on heaven's wing. Remember that in each prayer we raise, we raise our heroes live beyond their days. Endless peace for them we pray. So God bless them. This we say, God bless America. Amen. I just um, got a text from my husband's sister who lives in Bentonville, Arkansas, and she said she doesn't know the extent of damage yet, but they were hit by tornadoes last night, and so they were um, all till 4 a.m. this morning watching hmm. the tornadoes and whatever, and so there's outages all over, and they got four inches of rain, so. Wow. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Let us sing this song as we prepare for prayer. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Thanks to you 
For this day you have made, we rejoice that you brought us together to worship you today. We pray that you bless us, that we will encounter your grace today in this service of worship. We thank you for the blessing of our family and friends. We thank you for the blessing of our nation this memorial weekend. We remember, we remember as a nation all the sacrifices of those past, present, continue to make for the freedom we enjoy. We thank you for our military far and near, that you will be with them, oh God, you will protect them and be with their family. We pray for those who are experiencing the storm, the tornadoes, those who are recovering and the damages and it's just devastation in Greenfield, Iowa. I pray for the community there as they recover, that you will continue to help them. We pray for your strength for, for those who are um, disaster relief, all this su supplies, the, the city and, and the government. And, and we pray for our state and different part of the state that are impacted and the d disaster declaration being made. I pray you bless those who will be on the front line to help who remember a, pal, a family in, in Arkansas that you what as we had experienced tornado and they don't know the extent of the damage. You will be with that community. You will help them through this storm, oh God. And we'll pray for other states that have been impacted like Texas and others with, with the rain and everything else, oh God. We ask for your help. We ask for your grace. We thank you for, for the family, Sandy Baker family, who are here with us to worship, bless them as they celebrate and, and have family time to get a grand and traveling mercy as they go to their rural homes and all those who are traveling for this holiday weekend. Those who are feeling sad, we pray for your comfort for them and peace. We celebrate all those who are graduated from, from high school colleges and and, and a new beginning for their life. I pray for your blessing upon my son Luke and, and, and that you will bless him as he prepared for college. I thank you for this church, for each ministry of this church, for our fellowship time, for our choir, for our eye council. I pray for, for each of us as we gave ourselves in service to you. May you continue to strengthen us. May you allow your spirit to work through us, O oh God. As we prepare for annual conference, Father, pray for our bishop, our cabinet, and, and, and all those who will be going to annual conference, that you will work in and through us. We thank you for the United Methodist Church, and we thank you for our community. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. That everything we have is because of your grace and mercy towards us. So may you help us. Never to take for granted our freedom. Never to take for granted the privilege and the blessings we enjoy in this country. I pray you will protect our nation, you will guide our nation, our leaders, you'll be with them, oh God, and help them to do what is right. And pray, oh God, for this war, the, the war that is going on with Hamas and Israel, the pain and the devastation of those who are caught the young children, their family, those who are suffering from no food in Gaza and the struggle of freedom. The hostages who some have died and the family is in grief. Oh Lord, have mercy. For the sake of your compassion, have mercy on this world and bring peace. In the Middle East, bring peace in Ukraine. This is our prayer with thanksgiving in our hearts. And we pray together the prayer of Jesus saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day a daily bread, and forgive us as we forgive those who trespass Please stand as you are able uh, in preparation for this to sing because we may following that the scripture reading in the word of God.
There's a clipboard that is passed, um, please, if you can, for scripture reading as we look forward to the month of June. For those who desire to read the scripture, uh, I would appreciate that so you can feel as possible. Please follow along for the scripture reading uh, from the Gospel of John chapter 3. Familiar story. Follow closely. Thank you, Liz. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you were doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old, Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into, the, into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, You must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us today. Speak, for we, your people, will listen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all hearts be pleasing to you, for you are our rock, our redeemer, and our savior. Amen. It is a struggle for all of us. You, perhaps you have been in that struggle as I have done. We want answer. Sometimes we think we know the answer. Sometimes we think it's all about us. Sometimes we think we know we have been in this system so long. We know all about the system. It's almost like you, you, you work to a company or you work uh, in a place for 30 years. You know the in and out. Different things, how things are done. Have you been there before? Here is a man. We know the story. It is a struggle for him, Nicodemus. He's a man who is religious. He knows the rules. He follows everything. And he has a resume, if you will, all the credentials. And yet he encountered Jesus. Want to know, he has seen the sign, the miracle of Jesus. And, and, and so he wanted to know. Where all of this that Jesus have done from? It's a struggle for him. He's very curious. He's religious. Perhaps you think he's good enough. He, he has followed the rules. He has a good place with God. But Jesus would not buy that. Jesus just cut right to the heart and said, you must be born again. Unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Here is it said, you know, we are called to be born again from water and spirit, from above, not in ourselves. Here is said, Jesus cut to the heart of the matter for you and I that we must be born again. And that is the heart of God when he came to this world. To show compassion and mercy to those who are broken. That what the prophet Isaiah, he saw the beauty of God in the temple and, and he could not help but say, Woe is me, I am done. I'm, I live among people who are wrong and broken, but yet it was a struggle for him. 
and saw the glory of God. In our brokenness, God is the one who can give us grace and mercy to open our hearts to show us that we are forgiven. And so Isaiah received forgiveness and mercy, the transformation. And so the same for, for Nicodemus, he needs uh, some sort of transformation of the heart. You're not good enough in yourself when you come to God. None of us stand before God on our own to say, I've done everything you asked me to do. I'm good enough. Let me find my way. But when we come to God, we come with broken hearts and empty hands in need of mercy. So Jesus said, unless you are born of the water and spirit, you cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the reign of God. It's God rule. It's what God has called his, his kingdom, that he is the head of the kingdom. When we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all other things will be added to him. We cannot seek the kingdom of God on our own account. We must surround ourselves. We must give ourselves. And no matter how long we've been in the church, over and over, it is the, it's the spirit of the living God can renew us, transform us, and, 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 and create a, a place of accepting that we are accepted before God, not because of what we have done. We are accepted because of the grace of God. Amen? You know what Paul said? It is by grace you have been saved through faith. It is not of yourself. It is the gift of God. And so this gift of the Spirit, Jesus said, you must be born again. Look at Demas. And he did not get it. He did not understand. And he thinks he's old. And how can this be? How can I be born a second time, go in my mother's womb. It's impossible. He look at the biological aspect of the whole deal. <coughs> Jesus said, oh, no. it is the spirit at work in our hearts, in your hearts. That in our brokenness, God is the one that can mend our hearts when we, when we know that we need grace, when we know that we need forgiveness, when we know we cannot save ourselves. Oh, we can look to the one who came to save us. Now what Hebrew said, we should, we should gaze our eyes, turn our eyes to Jesus, the altar of our faith. You know what, the, the dharma of the, the scripture in that passage as Master Peter says, John 3, 16 is the diamond of hope for us. You know that scripture. You know that scripture. Yet we know it so much that so now we can just let it slide like a water, drinking water. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. It's, it's the love of God for this world. It's not for a certain group, a certain tribe, or certain people. And Nogodima think, oh, he is entitled in a way because he knows the rules, he, he follows the traditions. But the beauty of the gospel is that God so loved the world. All of us, we are loved by God. But whosoever, it's an invitation for all of us, whosoever, young and old, whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It's the eternal life. It's his work of the spirit at work in and through us. We cannot save ourselves, but thank God we have a savior. So uh, uh, Jesus gave that illustration and said, uh, as, as you look at it, this, this Old Testament passage, Look at this, the bronze and the tree, and you see the one who, who, who gave his life. He's the one who sacrificed his life on the tree. For God so loved the world. On the cross, Jesus showed his love for you and for me. That he gave an unison. That whosoever believed in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. But yes, the bottom part of that scripture we, that we don't know much, or we just don't want to think about it. It says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But he sent his son to save the world. God came to save us. Jesus saves. Jesus saves today. So today, you and I, we must be born again. By the spirit of God. We must be born again. Breaking our brokenness before God. Trusting 
Now, ohne we are saved by his grace alone. Our works, our good works does not count. In fact, Isaiah described it as filthy rags, our good work before God. But when we recognize our need for a Savior and knowing that we have won his name of Jesus Christ, the Emmanuel God is with what his name the good shepherd will lay down a life for the sheep. It's the Spirit of God, God working through us so we can sing with the an angel. Holy, holy, holy. My eyes, our eyes are seeing the grace of God. The grace of God have come to you through Jesus Christ. You know, we must be born again. Trusting that when we come to God, we are accepted by his mercy and grace. I remember uh, often when I go to Missouri or a family go to Missouri, I see my in-laws how much they, when my kids were growing up, how much they loved them. You know, soon they come, they, they want to spend time with grandpa and grandma. You grandparent, you know how, how, how much time, how much love. You, you want to give all that love to your grandchildren. And sometimes they ask you, can you buy me this? Isn't that true? <laughs> and when you do that, you buy whatever they ask you sometimes because you love them. Or maybe if you don't do it, you know what happens. Sometimes they keep crying. Oh, I, please, let me do something for you, Grandma. We want to do something sometimes to get reward. Think about it. We cannot do anything to get reward from God. We don't find our way. We don't bribe God. He has done everything for our salvation. He has done everything to, to, to give us grace so we can only trust and believe. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. A life that is fulfilling, a life of joy, a life of peace, a life of grace in the midst of turmoil, ups and downs, a life that you are surrounded by God's protection and guided by his love, a life knowing that nothing will separate you from the love of God. May we think about our life eternal life and trust that the blessing of God is with us and the blessing of God is with this nation as we remember this week, Memorial Day. May God help us to trust, to give ourselves, to be born anew by the Spirit of God. Thanks be to God. Let God's people say amen. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you will call us to be born again, not in our own strength, but by your spirit. So help us to be humble, to know that you have done everything for our salvation. We give praise and glory to your name. We worship you. May your word bear fruit in our hearts, that we will recognize our need. To honor you in all we say and do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Let us affirm what we believe as we say the Apostle Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, ascended into heaven, and ascended the right hand of God the Almighty. From thence he shall judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, 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 the
Amen. Let us sing our closing hymn, Trust and Obey. Cindy, for all you do for our service today. Thank you, Rochelle. Thank you, Liz. And thank you to Luke back there. And all of you who have come, I trust you be blessed today as you leave from this place. May God bless you. May he keep you. May his face shine upon you. And may he be gracious to you and grant you peace. Amen.